Okay, hopefully everyone can hear me. It looks like my mic is picking up. Um, so hello everyone. Welcome to A Fistful of Dice. My name is Matt. Uh, and you're watching a live stream uh, in which we make some Harbinger characters for the Harbinger version 0.5 playtest, which is dropping tomorrow. Um, probably around noon Eastern, I think, is when we're going to push it live. So, um, so yeah couple things first off uh trying out obs i'm gonna try and use obs a lot more for my live streams just because um uh, the more i use it the better i'll get at using it and the more i'll sort of fine tune the bit rate and video quality audio quality and all that kind of stuff so i want to get more comfortable with using it um and uh so that we don't run into tech issues when i run something like the provokers so um the other thing too is you might notice that we're listening to some music uh, while we do this and that there was some music on the splash screen at the beginning. Uh, there is a link down in the description to uh, where I got the license to use this music. It's a really cool uh, record label that does chill hop music, um, which I, I just love like lo-fi chill hop stuff. Uh, and they, uh, you can apply and they'll go check out your channel. I think you have to be a verified or like um what are the, what, I don't even know what it's called but like a YouTube partner or verified or whatever uh, basically you have to have a certain number of subscribers and a certain number of um like minutes to watched on your videos and they look at your channel and they will grant you a license to use a bunch of awesome lo-fi chill hop type stuff so uh anyway so I'm gonna have it playing quietly in the background if the music ever gets distracting or if it's ever too loud just please let me know in the chat and I'll just turn it down or turn it off or whatever um I just I love this stuff and it helps me think and be creative so it's helpful to have it on the stream uh it also is kind of exciting because I think I figured out a way to have music playing during provokers games and have the provokers hear it and the viewers hear it and i think i think i figured it out so we'll we'll see <laughs> um i'm gonna be keeping an eye on the chat as well and so if anyone has questions comments whatever about harbinger or other stuff whatever whatever you have questions about as long as it's somewhat rpg related um i'll be keeping an eye on the chat so thank you guys for hanging out with me here on this uh lovely thursday afternoon and we're gonna go ahead and get started here um <laughs> see there's people in the stream here we got marquise and lloyd of course um <laughs> uh, lloyd says matt told me there'd be dragoon armor can't wait for him to announce it on stream yes i know uh there was uh talk of including dragoon armor which is like the power armor um in Harbinger, there was talk of it being in this uh, particular playtest update. Um, but we actually yanked it out because we felt like it wasn't ready. And there were some other relics and also armor mods that I was working on that weren't quite ready. And so rather than delay version 0.5 uh, further, I did the thing that video game developers do. And I removed content and then released it. So <laughs> that content will be coming later. Um, probably, I, I can't imagine it's not going to be in 0.6. So um yeah all right yeah no the music's great i um i'm hoping that i can get it to work with provokers too where i can obviously it'll have to be like public domain royalty free type stuff but there's a lot of great um music like that out there so i'm gonna kind of build maybe a couple of playlists and just use those and um because uh well i don't want to go too deep into it for people that don't <laughs> give a crap but uh zoom allows you to share your computer audio um and that doesn't uh, share the audio coming from Zoom. So potentially I can play music on my computer, include that in the desktop source in OBS and also port it out to Zoom so that everyone in the Zoom can hear it. So, uh, yeah. Um, John Jarvis says, uh, Hey Matt, have you ever heard of Coriolis, The Third Horizon? It's been a huge inspiration for my Harbinger games and I think you'd like it. Uh, yes, I have looked at Coriolis, The Third Horizon. That is a really cool game. I love the art and the layout in that book for sure. Yes, Lloyd did make this frame. The yellow frame around uh, the overlay here is um, uh, by the URL DM. That's my overlay frame for our Nomad campaign. And you can actually see in the background here just the the, the briefest hint of a <laughs> Hanker and Furnail map back there. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. So this is the um, this is the new character sheet. Um, it's a little rough around the edges, but it's coming along. 
Um, you can see there's a there's some weirdness happening here, but um, I feel like it's it's usable enough where we're going to include this with the version 0 0.5. So you don't have to use the dumb Google Doc Har uh, Carbinger character sheet that I made. Um, you can use this one. This was actually made by John Pintar. And he did a super John Pintar with it where we didn't ask for him to do this. And we weren't even looking really to get a, a character sheet made. But he was like, hey, I made this for my Harbinger campaign. Didn't know if you guys wanted to use it. And we were like, uh, duh. Yeah, of course we do. So uh, we're going to be uh, refining this a little bit and cleaning it up. We're going to add a second page where you can include spells and um, like mods for the weapons and stuff like that. But um, I'm really, excuse me, really happy with it uh, for the most part. So... Um, so in this stream, we're going to be making the pre-generated characters. I'd like to make three of them. Uh, they're all going to be level one, and I'd like to make one for each, uh, origin, which is, are the races in Harbinger and each class. Um, so we're going to just going to go ahead and get started here. Um, and I think what we'll do is, um, we'll kind of take some uh, suggestions from the chat here about what kind of characters we want to make. Um... Uh, Bear McBearface, that's an awesome name. Uh, Matt, I had a question. When are you thinking the next Harbinger playthrough session will be? Um, so uh, do you mean like the, the Nomad campaign? Um, hopefully in July um, after AtCon uh, would, be, would probably be uh, the next session, uh, I would imagine. So um, actually all of the, <laughs> it's funny, all of the Nomad guys are going to be in town for AtCon. And we actually talked very briefly about potentially doing a Nomad session in person. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do that, so. Um, uh, Mom's the nerd, Taylor's here. She says, uh, what I want to see is all the little bits on the side that you have to reorder in the PDF editor and are such a pain. Oh, God, you know what, Taylor? They're not in the right order right now, and it's driving me nuts. I may reorder them before tomorrow, so it's not such a pain in the ass, um, but right now they're super out of order, so. All right, uh, Marquis says, Voidborn Mancer. Okay, that's what we're going to do, so. We're going to make a Voidborn Mancer. Specialization, we're not going to worry about because they're level one. Um, background, if they're from the ring, we'll go ahead and make them a laborer. Okay, so I've got the uh, PDF open on my other screen here, which I will not share with you guys. It's going to be coming out tomorrow. There are links down in the description to sign up for the playtest, um, and you'll get an email tomorrow when the uh, when the new one comes out. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put in the stuff for our origin, which is effectively our race. So uh, Voidborn is one of three options for your origin. Uh, Voidborn are the people of the Void. They're... Uh, the people in uh, so uh, everyone in Harbinger is effectively human, but there are some some differences between them, uh, just based on where they're from and all that kind of stuff. So um, the Voidborn uh, live in space. They either have uh, been born and developed uh, on a spacecraft, a void ship, a space station, um, the rings, uh, you know, little moonlets, basically any sort of um, living situation where there is lessened gravity and things like that. So. Uh, they are sort of, um, they're a little bit alien in nature. Uh, they're very tall, they're very lanky, they're very pale. Um, they often have um, eyes that are very large and almost seem to sort of glow because they have dark vision. Um, so they are human, but also sort of somewhat alien in nature. So that's, we're going to make a Voidborn, specifically from the rings. We're going to make an Astropunk uh, Voidborn Mancer in honor of Marquise, who is hanging out in the chat here. Um, so, uh, origins are very much like races. You get, um, some traits, uh, ability score increase. Your, you know, your, your sort of basic stats are, uh, are, are dictated by this and, um, you know, your speed and things like that. So, oh, we need to get our stats here too. I think I'm going to go ahead and do standard array for all of these level ones. Um, so I need to look up standard array really quick because I always forget, even though I always use it. So standard array, I think it's 15, 13, 12. Ah, I can't remember. I've got it right here, though. Boop, 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 boop. It is 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. That's right. It skips um, 11. So <clears throat> for a, a Mancer, we're going to want high charisma. So we're going to put the 
uh, 15 in our charisma. Um, and then we've got a 14. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the 14 in. Go ahead and put it in Constitution. Um, the 13, I think, we'll put in Dexterity. We're actually going to put the 10 in Strength. Um, the 12 in Intelligence and the 8 in Wisdom. So I see this character being... Um, they are... They're very, uh, they're sort of physically adept. Um, they're not, you know, super strong, but they're not weak either. They are laborer. They've grown up uh, mining the rings or fixing void ships or something. They, they, they live in the rings and they have toiled their entire life. And so I imagine them being a little bit more physically capable than uh, another mancer might, might be. And I like the idea that they are a little bit reckless and a little bit short-sighted. Uh, and so their wisdom is a little bit low. Uh, but I like the idea that they're clever and have a decent intelligence. So, all right, we're going to stick with that for now. Let me set that aside. My PHB here. Ooh, my PHB. All right, so. Um, all right, so ability score increase. So Voidborn get a uh, increase to dexterity and charisma, which works out pretty well for us. So dexterity and charisma both go up by one. And then we can increase one other ability score of our choice by one i'm thinking none of these uh boosts are going to or, or bumps are going to give us another modifier so i think what we'll do is we'll just bump up this constitution a little bit in preparation for uh a bump which we're going to get later okay all right, so those are our ability score increases. Uh, our speed is going to be 25 feet. And the reason why it's 25 and not 30 is because uh, Voidborn are used to drifting around in low gravity. And so they're not necessarily as, like, fleet of foot when you're, you know, running around. Um, but they have something later on that will help them in low grav environments. Um, they also get uh, dark vision. Uh, they have Astra Adapted, uh, which basically means uh, that they get to choose a uh, spell that they can cast. Um, so they're already going to be a Mancer, so this is just going to give them another spell to pick from. So I think I'm just going to give them Grab Shift, which is one of the spells that you can pick from. And Grab Shift is... It's kind of like Mage Hand. It has some differences, but it is very, like, Mage Handy. It's just, like, a very, like, versatile utility spell. It's just good to have. Um, and then uh, Drift Walker, which uh, Drift Walker is um, basically you, your movement speed is not reduced in a low grab environment, and um, your attacks don't have disadvantage. Normally, if you're in a low grab situation and you're, like, in combat your speed is going to be reduced and your attacks are going to have disadvantage. But if you're a Voidborn, you're used to, you know, rocking and rolling in low gravity, so it doesn't actually affect you. So essentially what Driftwalker does is it nullifies that. So, um, you know, this is a, another, like, very simple game design tenet is, like, you know, <laughs> if a character gets something, that something should break the rules somehow. You know what I mean? And that, that's basically what this does is it breaks the rules. So... Uh, Driftwalker is uh, no movement speed reduction or disadvantage on oh disadvantage on attacks in low grav locations. Okay, so that's what Voidborn get. We also get to roll for our quality. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Uh, quality is kind of like a it's like a physical. Uh, a notable physical thing about your character. It's a physical feature that sets them apart. Um, and all of the origins have a table that you roll for, or you can pick, you know, whatever, um, that will give you a cool uh, quality. So I can't find a d10. There it is. Uh, two. My veins glow with absorbed astra. So that's cool. Glowing veins. My veins glow with absorbed astra so basically this character she's been living 
in the void and around Astra so long that her body has sort of just become suffused with it and she, her veins sort of like have this like dim glow to them. So that's kind of cool. I like that. That's a neat thing. Okay. All right. So that's our, that's our origin. Simple as that. Just like race and D&D. Now we get to pick our background, um, which we, we opted to go with laborer. Um, laborer get a couple of proficiencies. These are just like the backgrounds in regular fifth edition with a few other differences. Um, so they get a proficiency with athletics, um, tech, and the arc tool, which is the arc tool is like the, you know, thieves tools of, uh, of Harbinger. Uh, they start with some equipment. They get a uh, an iron pin identifying our profession. We'll say she's a miner. Uh, worn work gloves and a belt pouch with 10 glint inside. Okay. That's our equipment. And then we also get a nice feature called Low Folk, um, which basically means um, uh, easily find aid with common people. Uh, they provide food, shelter, and mundane resources. So basically, if you're in trouble, you know, let's say you're on, you're in the drift market and you get into some trouble and you're looking for help. You could probably weasel your way into any situation with, you know, fellow laborers, people who are looking out for each other and have each other's backs. Um, you could get in there and, and, and help them out, or they would help you out, rather, as long as you don't pose a threat. So, you know, the background features are very, like, socially sort of focused. All right, so that's our, that's our background. Super easy. She's a laborer. She used to mine in the rings. Now we get our class, which uh, is going to be Manser. So, um, Mansers get, uh, when they start out, they get a number of hit points uh, equal to six plus their constitution modifier. Oh, we can go ahead and put our modifiers in here now since we're done with this. So, strength is plus zero, uh, dex is plus two, constitution is plus two, intelligence is plus one, wisdom is minus one, and charisma is plus three. So, our con is going to be plus two, so we have eight hit points here. Eight hit points, and we have um, one D uh, six hit dice. There we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. I have disadvantage on attacks in low gravy locations. I love gravy, says your LDM. I agree with that. Um, all right, so we also get some proficiencies, uh, including, let's go armor. So we get, uh, let's do armor, weapons. We'll do, uh, we get light armor, simple weapons, tools. It's gonna be arc tool and void ships. I got some interesting feedback on the last uh, iteration of this where they were saying that they didn't like that every class got proficiency with void ships. I could see where they where where that would be. Like it doesn't make that proficiency special if every class gets it. But I also didn't necessarily like the idea that like you potentially have someone in your crew that is not proficient with void ships. So I don't know. I'm not sure how we're exactly we're gonna handle that, but um I might consider um like taking void ship proficiency out of class and putting it with, like giving it to people through backgrounds maybe uh, would be a good way to do it. So we'll see. Uh, Marquis says, I wish light armor and Harbinger was actually made out of light. That'd be getting weird. Well, you you are like the spell spectral armor then, my friend. You can create an armor of light around yourself. Armor of light. Okay, uh, saving throws. We're going to be proficient with constitution and charisma. Um, skills. We get to choose two from Astra, Astrogation, Deception, History, Insight, Intimidation, Investigation, and Persuasion. I'm going to go with 
Astra, and uh, Intimidation. I like the idea that that she's a little like rough and tumble, like wrong side of the tracks type character where uh, she can kind of throw her weight around a little bit and intimidate people. And I like that. Um, I like that she would do that like using her Astra. Oh yeah, Marquise, there's a ton of cool yellow spells that we added in this uh, playtest that I think you'll like. Um, a lot of them uh, based on feedback from uh, from Lloyd. So we've got some crazy like mind-affecting stuff, and um, there's one where you can Astra, you can project yourself across space and like be in other places and stuff. like Just weird, weird stuff. All right, uh, starting equipment, we're going to be getting a uh, scout suit. Uh, one simple melee weapon, which we'll pick here in a little bit. Uh, one simple pulser, basic gear kit, and 25 ammo. All right, starting at first level, we're going to be getting our spellcasting feat because we are a spellcasting class. So spellcasting, um, we're going to, let's see here. Our spellcasting ability is charisma. And we're going to go ahead and put our spell save DC is going to be uh, 8 plus proficiency plus charisma. So, oh, proficiency bonus is going to be plus 2. Oh, right here. I was like, there's no place for a proficiency bonus. But there is. It's just in a different place than I'm used to. So, our spell save DC at level 1 is going to be 13, which is actually not bad. Uh, spell attacks are going to be plus 5. Also, not bad. So, spell casting. Uh, we have... Um, an Astrophade limit of three. And we know three spells. Three spells known. And those will be of Astrophade limit three or below. So we'll pick those here in a little bit. So that's our spell casting. And then we also get at first level, we get a nifty thing called Astro Recovery, which is very similar to Arcane Recovery in that uh, we can get back some, uh, we can reduce our Astrophade. So... Uh, once per day, complete a short rest and reduce Astra Fade by Con Mod. Plus two. So basically, once per day, we can complete a short rest and reduce our Astra Fade by two, which is really nice. Most people cannot reduce their Astra Fade on a short rest. Uh, John Pintar has a good question how would you uh fluff a mancer with no astra skill yeah I, I would basically have it so that i actually thought about maybe not giving her the astra skill in that like yes she knows magic but she doesn't necessarily like understand astra you know what i mean like it's not like she's uh astra is more about like understanding astra and knowing things about how astra is utilized and stuff so i think for her she knows about Astra, not necessarily from her magic, but just through working with it, through being around it all of the time. And now these sort of abilities are awakening within her. She's realizing that she can, you know, manipulate Astra with her, her spirit and her mind and her body. And so it would be feasible to play a Mancer who is not proficient in Astra in that they don't really understand how it works necessarily. Does that make sense? Because mancers are intuitive casters. They're more like sorcerers than wizards, really. Um, and so they're they're casting through this like you know this this pure force of will uh, essentially. So um, oh, also we uh, we need to roll our quirk. I forgot about that. Um, your background gives you a quirk. You know how in five e like your background gives you um, a bunch of stuff. You get you get a, a trait, a feature. No, uh, what is what are they called? Um, traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. Uh, this you just get a quirk, and it's just like it's all that stuff kind of rolled in together. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and roll her quirk here. Five. I take pride in the work I've done. The known orbits have been forged by my hands. So she's actually uh, proud of the work that she's done as a laborer. Sorry, I'm just realizing I never drank my lunch, so I'm going to be doing that while we're doing this. Oh, 
Soylent is people. Okay. <clears throat> so, and that's all we get um, at level one as a Mancer. We get the spellcasting feature and Astral Recovery. So, let's go pick some equipment and then pick some spells. Does that sound good, everybody? And then we'll move on to the next uh, next character here. So, we have a scout suit, um, which is uh, was going to give us an AC of 11 plus our dex mod. So, we're going to have an armor class of 13, which is not very high, but that's all right. Our initiative is also going to be plus two from our dex here. Um, Kevin Wilson, could Treaders use a blue, green, yellow Astra skill and not just red energy weapon? Uh, Kevin, it's actually interesting that you mentioned that. That is something that I'm actually kind of tinkering with for the Treaders for later down the line. Um, it has been made abundantly clear, and this is something that I feel is the case as well, that the Treader is the most boring class in Harbinger, and I, I don't... I don't want to say that because there are plenty. I've seen plenty of people play awesome Treader characters, um, but just mechanically and in terms of like story and lore, the Treaders are not as interesting to me as the Mechanists and the Mancers. And so, part of my goal going forward here is to really nail down the story behind the Treader and give them some more options. And so I really like the idea of their energy weapon being a much more versatile thing. Instead of just being like, I can do more damage, you can do different things with the Astra, and you can put blue Astra or yellow Astra or green Astra into your weapon and do different things. So um, that is definitely something that we're going to be working with. I'm also uh, working with Barker, developing the third and final specialization for the Treader, which is going to be called <clears throat> the Farseeker. And they're going to be kind of like a shaman druid like kind of lost their mind on the edge of space but also awakened magic within themselves caster class so it's going to be kind of uh, a treader with some minor casting abilities um and like the ability to like look up at the stars and like predict things and it's going to be really cool barker is working with me on it and he's got some really really cool ideas so that is down the line however okay can you guys hear the music, by the way? It's really quiet for me. I'm not sure how loud it is for you guys. I might turn it up just a little bit, but I don't want to have it be distracting. Okay, so scout suit, we got um, weapons. We need to pick our weapons. I like the idea that she has like a big old hammer. Um, so I think what I'm going to do here is give her a hammer as her weapon. And that's kind of like her... Uh, well, maybe not a hammer because then she doesn't benefit from the decks. I don't... <laughs> I want to make this character useful as a pre-gen, um, so I think what we'll do is give her... Uh, I guess we'll just give her a dagger. Maybe she... Well, no. You know what? We're going to give her a hammer, and she'll utilize the pulser a little bit more, I think. Okay, Marky says the music is super quiet. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. You guys tell me if it's too loud. There we go. Okay, cool. Just let me know if it ever gets distracting. I don't want it to take away from the from the stream here. Okay, so she is gonna have a hammer. And the reason why I'm giving her a hammer, even though it's not super useful for her, is, ooh, I need to center these numbers here. That's gonna drive me nuts. Um, is because with her armor class and her hit points, she's probably not going to be up close fighting in melee very often. Um, at least for now, so. Yeah, John Pindar says, maybe give the Treaders some story framing rather than lots of rules. And that, John, that's a great point, and I actually agree with that. And so when I say that I want to, I really want to focus on making the... Uh, treaders more interesting and more fun to play. I don't want them to be complicated because the, just adding complication for the sake of adding complication is not good game design. And so I definitely want to keep them simpler than say a mechanist or a mancer because they do fill that role of being like a good, just like stalwart versatile class. 
but I also want them to have some cool options and some cool story framing around that. I want the story behind the Treaders to make sense. So I absolutely agree with you on that, John, for sure. Okay, and uh, the hammer is gonna do 1d4 bludgeoning damage. Okay. Now she also gets a simple pulser. I'm absolutely going to give her, let's give her a short scatter gun. Short scatter gun. The attack bonus for that is going to be four. And the damage on the short scatter gun is gonna be 1d10 uh, plus two, piercing. Um, scatter gun. Uh, the range on the scatter gun is 3090. 3090, and the ammo reload is 2. So basically, it has a range of uh, effective range of 30 up to 90 with this advantage, and after two shots, you have to reload. Uh, John says, I've been hobering a tank spec for Treaders and Mechanists lately. One thing I found lacking in the playtest. That's cool. Yeah, I um, that's actually something that Tim and I have talked a lot about. Is that the, um, currently there's not really like a if you wanted to play like a like a space marine type character, there's not really anything in there for it. So um, I think moving forward we might dial in the Reaver a little bit and make them a little bit more of a heavier sort of tankier um, class. All right, so we've got our gear here. Uh, basic gear kit. Oh, she's got a short scatter gun. And the basic gear kit is going to have a uh, satchel, bedroll. If you hear hammering in the background, it's because they're remodeling the uh, townhouse right next to mine. Breather, rope, 50 feet of it, uh, kelp rounds, six, kelp round six, canteen, glow rods, three, mender, three charges, and 25 glint, so she's going to start with 35 total glint. So let's move important stuff up to the top here. There we go. Oops. There we go. Do, 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 do. Okay. All right, so that's all the equipment. Now we just need to pick uh, three spells, and we're good to go. So uh, because we're a Voidborn, we already have the Grav Shift. Um, we have the Grav Shift uh, Cantrip, for lack of a better. It's an Astrophate Zero. Um, I think we're also going to give ourselves Astrobolt, just because that's a really good utility spell. So we're going to take um, Astrobolt. It's like kind of a Mancer's Bread and Bunner. And I think we're going to move her towards being a kind of green mancer. Um, so I think the other two spells we're going to do uh, Twitch Shield and Spectral Armor. Okay, so let's go ahead and add Astro Bolt here, um, which will be a plus five to attack. Uh, and Astro Bolt... Um, it's a range of 120 feet. It's 1d8 force damage. 1d8 force. Astrobolt. Range. 120 feet. All right. Bum, 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 bum. Boom. Shoom, boom, boom. All right, and then I think we're done here. We can just fill out, um, I'll fill out all this stuff later. Um, but yeah, looking good. So that's our pre-gen for the Mancer. I think that's cool. I think mean, it's a lot of good utility stuff. Maybe I should give her Void Slip. 
Marquise pointed that out. I think Void Slip would be f more fun to play with. So I got to think of this like a good, it's a good pre-gen. You want to get a good feel for all the different kinds of like Astra. So I think having her have Grav Shift from uh, yellow stuff, Void Slip from the yellow where she can kind of manipulate stuff, move around the battlefield, and then giving her Astro Bolt, which is just a good damage dealer, and then Twitch Shield, which she can use to bring up and block some damage, I think will be good. So... Um, and obviously there's a lot of utility there with the different boosts for the spells as well, so. Hey, Jake's here, Mitada. Mini Terrain Domain is in the house. Hey Jake, how's it going, man? We're just hanging out. We're listening to some lo-fi hip hop and roll up some Harbinger characters. It's awesome. All right, so this is our Mancer. So let's go ahead and save this. Do Mancer pregen. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, open up the open up the dog. Open up a new character sheet here. Move it over. There we go. All right. So. <laughs> it is a dope looking character sheet uh jake this was done by john pintar and um it'll be in the play test tomorrow so okay next character so we got a void board excuse me we got a void born mancer so what should we do next um we've got um moonborn and void forgeborn in the origins and the treader and the mechanist in the classes so um let me know what she did we should do next in the chat here i haven't checked on the stream quality in a little bit when was that 154 okay that was before the stream even started awesome so it looks like the stream has been going really well Um, which is great. Hopefully you guys haven't had any weird buffering or anything like that. <clears throat> All right, so Nash Smith says a Moonborn Treader, and Paul says a Scavenger Forgeborn Mechanist. Okay, so uh, Nash said a Space Marine Treader. Let's do the Treader next. Um, so let's do a Forgeborn Treader, and we'll do a, or a Moonborn Treader, rather, and a Forgeborn Mechanist after that. So this is going to be a Moon... Wait, what did I say? Yeah, Moonborn Treader. Uh, let's go ahead and save this now so I don't mess anything up. So this is going to be our Treader pregen. All right. So we're doing a like a space marine type treader. So I think we're gonna put the 15 in our decks. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the uh, 13 and the 14, 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. Um, let's do 12. All right, so, geez, everything in my body just cracked. Uh, scrolling down to the origins. Okay, Moonborn. So Moonborn are, they are the people that live on the ground. They are as close to a typical human as we know them as you can get. So um, Moonborn are going to be, uh, oh man, the character sheet's kind of cut off here, isn't it? Here, one second. I didn't realize it was. Oh, sorry, guys. One second. Come on. Exploit. 
He's a little finicky with this kind of stuff. What the heck? Why being so weird? There we go. Okay, that's all right. Anyway. I just don't want a bunch of it to be cut off, but you guys can see it. It's all good. Okay. All right, so Moonborn. Uh, they're just like regular humans. Uh, they grow up on one of the moons of the known orbits of Bastion. Um, they get some cool stuff though, so we're gonna go ahead and give that to them. So their con and wisdom both go up by one. So con's gonna go up to 15 and wisdom's gonna go up to 13. Uh, maybe we should move some stuff around. Hmm. No, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Um, and then one other one of our choice by, goes up by one. I think we'll go ahead and put the strength up by one. Um, speed, they grow up in no, no, normal gravity, so they have a regular walking speed. Um, they get this thing called adaptable. Um, and they gain one, oh, they gain proficiency in one skill. Uh, so let's see what makes sense. Let's give him... Uh, let's do survival. Uh, Hardy, um, your bones and muscles have developed in normal and normal or increased gravity. Your hit point maximum increases by one and increases uh, by one every time you gain a level. So they're going to have an extra one hit point. Um, and they also get elemental attunement. You were born and raised on a moon of Bastion. You are accustomed to the elements of that moon. Choose a damage type, which corresponds to the predominant environment of your home. Acid for forest, cold for tundra, fire for desert, lightning for plains, and poison for swamp. You have resistance to that damage type. In addition, when traveling through environments corresponding to your resistance, your movement speed cannot be reduced due to difficult terrain, and you have advantage on perception and survival checks. So basically, wherever you grew up, you're good in that environment. Um, I like to think that this guy grew up on a cold planet, so we're going to give him the cold thing. So elemental attunement. Did I spell it wrong? Oh no, it just doesn't think attunement is a word. Okay, there we go. Um, and we're gonna do cold. So resistance to cold damage. Um, in tundra environments, uh, movement speed not reduced by difficult terrain. Advantage on survival and perception checks. <laughs> Marquis said, uh, Matt, if you did a weekly stream with lo fi in the background just working on stuff or something, you'd be the number one RPG streamer, man, I tell you. Dude, thank you. That honestly, Marquis, coming from you, that means a lot. Um, I want to stream more often. It's something that I really enjoy doing, and um, because I work from home, I can kind of schedule it whenever I want to. Well, somewhat. I have a lot of meetings and stuff during the day, but um, it is easy. It is fairly easy for me to schedule this kind of stuff ahead of time. So, I want to try and stream at least once a week on a somewhat consistent schedule, and I think that people would show up and watch me work on stuff. And even if I was just prepping for a game or working on game design or just answering questions, I think people would show up. So thank you, man. That is very encouraging, and I think I might do that. Okay. Um, Moonborn qualities. We get to roll for the quality now. Ooh, 10. Um, my hair is thick and grows quickly. It's considered bad luck to cut it off in where I'm from. Okay, so kind of some Dothraki stuff. My hair is thick and grows quickly. It's considered bad luck to cut it where I'm from. So this dude has like long, I imagine he has like long braided hair. All right, so that's our origin. He's moonborn. Uh, background. So let's see. We like the idea that this dude's kind of a space marine type. So my, 
my instinct here is to... Sorry, the PDF's like flashing. I'm not sure why. Sorry about that. I'm like scrolling in the other PDF screen and Adobe Acrobat's like, stop it! Um, my, okay, so my instinct is to either go Oath Sworn and make him kind of a knight or Raider and make him kind of a space pirate. What do you guys think? Should we go like Noble Knight or like Bad Guy Raider? A mini train domain. You should simulcast on Twitch. I've been seeing more game prep, DM prep, and character building streams popping on there. You know what? And I probably should. Um, Jake, I have a Twitch account and I just never use it. Um, I'm just not sure if my internet could handle it, but I'm definitely willing to give it a shot. So maybe we'll maybe we'll give it a try at some point here soon. All right, Marquis says Raider, so we're gonna go with Raider. <clears throat> oh, and then he said Nah, Knight. Night for pregen. Okay, cool. All right, I'm going with Oathsworn. Okay, Oathsworn. Uh, you pledge yourself to a noble house of the known orbits and serve its interests in your travels. Whether the sovereign or one of the major septs or a lesser vassal house, you have sworn to uphold its values and protect its name with steel and resolve. Proficiencies, we get history and persuasion. Um, equipment, we get a um, badge with Sept Sigil, cloak in Sept's colors, belt pouch, and 15 glint. Sworn Allegiance is our, sweet, our feature here. Sworn Allegiance, uh, you are sworn to a noble Sept of Bastion and are afforded its protection where possible. If your sworn sept has a presence in your current location, you can make contact with representatives of that sept and request aid, shelter, food, and other mundane resources. So very similar to the uh, laborer, but sort of in the other direction. It's less about seeking out common people and more about seeking out the sept that you serve for aid. Um, if your sworn sept has a presence, seek help to gain food, shelter, mundane resources. Okay. And then we get to roll for our quirk. Our oath sworn quirk. Okay, rolling a d10. Eight. I'm up front in my speech and mannerisms to a fault. It harms as much as it helps. Notice that Harbinger doesn't have alignments. I don't hate alignments. A lot of people don't care for alignments. I do not hate alignments, but um, it just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like Harbinger to me. So instead of doing alignments, we've kind of rolled alignment into the quirks um, where you're getting a little bit about your character and sort of their POV. Um, you know, things about their past, things that are interesting about their character or their outlook. Um, it kind of just gives you a good starting place for role-playing your character without being overwhelming and having to keep track of a bunch of kind of stuff. Okay, uh, so class, this guy's gonna be a treader. I really am sorry about the flickering. I don't know why the PDF is flickering. That's so strange. Okay, treader right here. All right, so we already got our proficiency bonus of plus two. Um, Astrophade limit is gonna be one. Okay, so hit points, we're gonna get 10 plus our con mod, um, which we can go ahead and do those now. So strength is gonna be plus two, dexterity is gonna be plus two, constitution is gonna be plus two, intelligence is gonna be minus one, wisdom is gonna be plus one, charisma is gonna be plus one. So we're gonna get 10 plus two is 12, plus one from our moonborn uh, trait which will give us a total of 13 hit points, which is not too bad. Oops, there we go. Okay, uh, here we go. So armor, weapons. Uh, we're gonna do uh, all armor, shields, uh, all weapons, tools, 
vehicles and void ships. Okay, saving throws, it's gonna be strength and wisdom. Skills, we choose two from acrobatics, animal handling, astrogation, athletics, insight, investigation, nature, perception, stealth, survival, or tech. Um, so let's give this guy athletics and let's give him like insight. I don't know why. I just got, I got, I get the, uh, get the sense that he has good insight. Oh yeah. Charisma mod is zero. Thank you, Paul. I don't know why, but when I was scrolling down, it looked like a 12. Um, all right, so equipment. We're going to start out with a uh, either a scout suit or bigle hide, um, which bigle hide is a medium medium armor. Um, where's my other PDF here? Okay, uh, bigle hide. I think is uh, max two decks, so that would actually work for us. So I think we'll go with bigle hide and give this uh, treader a little bit um, more staying power. Bigle hide armor. Um, we'll give them a carbine, one simple melee weapon. Um, and then they get a basic gear kit and 25 ammo. This music is awesome. I'm really enjoying this. Okay. Excuse me. Okay, so as a treader at first level, we get a cool feature called Traverser, which means that uh, we ignore difficult terrain, advantage on initiative checks, and on your first turn during combat, you have advantage on attack rolls against creatures that have not acted yet. Here we go. We also get uh, energy weapons. Increase astrophade by one to add 1d8 force damage to single weapon for one minute. Ba, 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 ba. All right, and that's all we get is a treader at first level. So let's go down and pick our equipment here. So we already got our Bigel Hide armor, which is going to give us 13 plus our dex mod. So we're going to have an armor class of 15, which is nothing to shake a stick at. Our initiative is going to be plus two. Um, and let's see here. We get a simple melee weapon. I kind of want to give him like a spear. Would that be weird? I want to give him a spear. So he's gonna have a carbine, a spear. I know it's carbine. Barker always tells me it's carbine. And I'm like, I don't like that. I like carbine. <laughs> I've been calling it carbine forever. All right, so a spear would um, give him, his strength is plus two, so it'd be plus four. And he'd probably be holding it with two hands. So we could say, uh, we'll do, it'd be 1d6, 1d8 piercing damage okay spear range 20 60 all right and the carbine is gonna be also plus four and it's gonna do uh, 1d10 piercing carbine is, oh wait, hang on, sorry, I did this wrong. I have to do that. Okay, carbine range is going to be a 7120, and reload five. So I like this guy. Okay, um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just grab the basic gear kit from our Mancer here and 
teleport it on over to this guy. There we go. Here, I'm gonna... Here we go. Oops. There we go. All right. So this treader here is done. He's looking good. Yeah, this guy's cool. All right, awesome. Final character. We are going to make a, oops, Forgeborn Mechanist. Taking it down low now. Dimming the lights. Okay, Forgeborn. Okay, Forgeborn are probably my favorite origin. Forgeborn are... So, in Harbinger, there's this, like, ancient empire called the Old Dominion, and they're the ones that, like, built... Um, they're the ones that colonized Bastion. They terraformed all of the moons. Um, a lot of tech in the Harbinger universe is derived from this Old Dominion that fell, you know, due to all these calamities, all these wars and, and things like that. Um, the Old Dominion created these things called Forgeborn, which were people that were engineered using the forges, the same engines that terraformed planets. Um, Forgeborn are people that have awoken beneath these vaults, uh, inside vaults beneath forges, and have struck out into the known orbit. So they're sort of like replicants from Blade Runner a little bit, um, but uh, with the added sort of you know, they're an ancient people that have recently awoken. So I really like the Forgeborn. I feel like they have kind of a cool flavor and like a unique sort of story spin. So I think that's what we're going to do. Uh, Nicholas says, I'm not a native English finger, but wouldn't it be like you say the word carbine, like wind, wine? So, okay, so yes, but English is a language that doesn't follow its own rules, and also I'm pretty sure that carbine isn't an English word. So, yeah. Uh, Paul says, are Forgeborn organic? Yes, they are. Forgeborn are organic. They are people. They're humans. Well, human-ish. Um, <clears throat> okay, so our strength, as a Forgeborn, oh, we need to do our uh, thing here. So, um, Mechanist, uh, we want pretty high intelligence, so we're going to put uh, high intelligence, and we're also going to do some high strength. No, we're not. We're going to put the 13 in strength. We're going to put 14 in constitution. Uh, dexterity, we're going to put the... Uh, we're going to put the 10... 12, 8. Hmm. Let's put the 12 here and the 10 in the wisdom. There we go. John Jarvis says, I personally made Forgeborn like Aetherborn in Magic the Gathering, basically a living byproduct of Astra usage. And that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, the Forgeborn can be whatever you make them. If you want them to be... Um, more like robots, you can have them be more like robots. If you want them to be, you know, sort of elemental, you can have them be elemental. It's it's whatever. Um, it's very easy to reskin this stuff, so. Okay, so our strength and our intelligence are both going to go up by one. So that uh, beefs us up quite a bit. Um, our speed is gonna be 35. Forgeborn are large, powerful creatures. Um, they're engineered for, <laughs> to be physical, so. Um, hardened form, um, our AC is going to increase by one. AC increased by one, and I'm going to put already included because we're going to, uh, we're gonna include that when we put our armor up there. Um, waking sleep. Uh, you do not require sleep. Instead, you meditate for four hours and receive visions of the old dominion. 
Uh, memories of the Dominion. So, history and tech checks relating to the old Dominion get double proficiency. I know I spelled Dominion wrong there. Dominoes. <clears throat> Do, 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 do. Okay, uh, now we need to roll our quality. Forgeborn are cool um, because they're big. They're also hairless, but all of them have tattoos. Um, these really cool tattoos that kind of denote what their job was in the Old Dominion. Uh, three, the tattoo on my bicep resembles two crossed blades. Was I a soldier? Ooh, cool. The tattoo on my bicep resembles two crossed blades. Was I a soldier? Perfect. Yeah, and I like Paul's idea about making him a scavenger, so his background's gonna be scavenger. All right. There's some cool lore in here, too, about the Forgeborn and, like, the first Forgeborn that ever woke up. Her name was Felrian, and she, like, woke up, and then she was the one who woke up a bunch of the other Forgeborn. It's, it's uh, kind of a cool cool little bit of lore that I put in there that I'm pretty happy with, so. Um, all right, so we're going to go scavenger for the background here. Um, proficiencies, we gain proficiency in history, uh, tech, and the arc tool. We're going to get arc tool proficiency anyway, but that's all right. So history, tech arc tool okay equipment so we start with a uh, so we get a tarnished old dominion coin uh, two random items from the trinket table Ooh, so we get to roll some trinkets actually I'll have you guys roll trinkets um, guys in the chat go ahead and roll me a d100 you know percentile d percentile and let me know what you get and I'll pick a couple of the numbers um, 10 glint. Okay, Junker. Um, you've learned how to comb through debris to find useful bits of old tech. While exploring ruins, dead void ships, or other areas containing salvage, you can spend one hour per day searching for valuable detritus. De detritus. Detritus? Detritus? Detritus, I think. Uh, at the GM's discretion, you may uncover valuable salvage worth D10 glint or roll once on the trinkets table. Um, once per day, spend one hour scavenging to find D10 one, D10 glint, or two trinkets. All right, so we got 47 and 73. Thanks, guys. So I'm going to the trinkets. Um, 47 is a Scrug War Axe handle. And what did I say? What was the other one? Uh, 47, 73. 73 is a sundial that measures the orbits of an unknown, unknown moon. Sundial that measures the orbit of an unknown moon. Cool. Very cool. Okay. Now we get to roll for our quirk as a scavenger. that one i find a use for everything and refuse to throw anything away i find a use for anything and refuse oh find a use for everything and refuse to throw anything away all right so that's our scavenger background now we are going to get the mechanist class here all right Mechanists, um, one, they get, uh, eight plus con mod HP, um, our con mod is gonna be plus two. Oh, I did this wrong. I always, like, go back and forth. Did I do this right on the treader? Yeah, I did it right on the treader. I like having the, um, 
modifier in the big box because that's what you're going to be looking at like 99% of the time. There we go. Okay, so 8 plus our con mods, we're going to have 10 HP. Um, we're also going to be... Oh my god, armor... Did I hit caps lock? Yeah, I did. Armor and weapons. Uh, we get uh, light armor, medium armor, shields... Simple weapons, carbines, and short blades, tools, uh, vehicles, and void ships. <clears throat> Saving throws are going to be dexterity and intelligence. Skills. We get to choose three skills. Um, Astra, Astrogation, Insight, Investigation, Medicine, Perception, Sleight of Hand, Stealth, and Tech. So we're definitely going to do stealth. I think we'll do. Um, I think we'll do perception as well. And let's go ahead and do medicine. Okay. Equipment. I'm going to do a scout suit. Uh, one simple melee weapon. One simple pulser. Then we also get an arc tool, one spheroid, basic gear kit, uh, which we're just going to grab from the treader here. There we go. And 25 ammo. Okay. All right, so uh, the first thing that mechanists get, and that I just, I love, it's like one of my favorite things in the game, is the spheroids. So, um, they're, you're gonna start with one. Um, spheroids are basically little, they're little droids that you can like throw out and they float around and do different things. There's a bunch of different kinds of them. Um, so, why did I just write mechanist right here? That was dumb of me, it's spheroids. Um, okay, so as an action, Increase uh, Astrophade by one to activate. Okay, so there are four different kinds of spheroids that you can pick from at level one. There's combat, healing, shield, and support. So combat's pretty self-explanatory. It can make attacks. Healing, pretty self-explanatory. You can heal people with it. Uh, shield, you can you know buff up people's AC with it. And support, you can um, add, give people a D4 to add to their rolls. My inclination is to give them a healing or a support spheroid. Um, and I'm willing to uh, look to the chat for guidance on this. Do you guys think, um, do you guys think we should do a healing spheroid or a support spheroid? Let me know in the chat. Um, to activate spheroid for one minute. Spheroid can move 30 feet and do one action. Also, spheroids have um, an armor class of 10 plus proficiency bonus, so that'll be 12 AC 12, 2 HP. Nash says healing. I'm inclined to go healing too, just because I feel like it's the most useful for a pre-gen. Um, so, oops, oh lord. So healing through a targets one creature within ten feet. 
heals up to, so it's your level times five worth of hit points, so heals up to five HP. Um, five HP pool. There we go. Cool. All right, so there's our spheroid. And then we also get um, expertise. Which is double proficiency. Um, we're gonna in tech and arc tools already included. Okay, so do arc tool is gonna be um, usually it's intelligence most of the time, so it'd be three plus double proficiency, so it'd be plus seven. <clears throat> And we'll put it here too. There we go. All right, so that's all the mechanist stuff that we get. Um, let's go do our equipment really quick. And then we're gonna be done here. So we went with the scout suit, which is light armor, 11 plus dex mod. So that'll be, uh, ooh, <laughs> 12 armor class. But we get that extra plus one from being a forgeborn. So that brings it up to 13 armor class. Um, we also get a simple melee weapon. I think we're gonna go ahead and do a do a hand axe, and we get a simple pulser. I think we're gonna do a light pistol. Okay, hand axe uh, is gonna be plus four. Damage from the hand axe is going to be 1d6 plus 2. Slashing. Light pistol is going to be plus 3. Uh, 1d8 plus 1. Piercing. Did I include the damage modifier in these guys? I sure didn't. 1d10 plus 2. Spear would be 1d6 plus 2. Sorry about that. It's, I don't know why I forgot that. Oh, I managed to do it here, though. Okay, cool. Alright. Versatile. 1d8. Oh, let me save this really quick as the mechanist. Mechanist pre-gen. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> oh, we need to do our hit dice too. We get uh, 1d8. D8. Okay. Um, all right, so the hand axe, uh, light pistol. So hand axe is range 20, 60. Light pistol, gonna be range 4120. And it's going to be, where's the reload? Oh, reload five. Okay, cool. All right, so there you have it, guys. Um, we've got all three of our pre-gens done. Um, I'm just gonna go through um, after the stream here and make sure that everything looks good, check all the numbers and everything, um, update the skills. But these are gonna be the three pre-gens that are going to be included uh, in Harbinger Playtest version 0 0.5 tomorrow. So um, yeah, this was a lot of fun, guys. I had an absolute blast. It was really fun to hang out, listen to some good tunes, just relax and do some awesome RPG stuff. So I'm definitely gonna be trying to do these streams more often. Uh, hang out with you guys and just do some different stuff, some D&D prep, um, working on game design, you know, doing this kind of stuff. So answering questions. So um, yeah, thank you for stopping by and hanging out with me this afternoon. It was a lot of fun. And um, if you have not yet, the link to the Harbinger playtest is below. It is completely free. It's going to be a 65 page supplement tomorrow with new races, new classes, new backgrounds, a whole new spell system, monsters, all kinds of cool stuff, equipment, weapons, weapon mods. So if you like sci-fi, if you like space operas, if you like 
weird horror in the darkness of the void, then you should check out Harbinger. It's going to be coming out tomorrow. And I'm really excited about it. So I hope you guys like it. So thank you again, guys. Take care. Happy gaming all. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this lovely, lovely day.